Ever since I first saw Baldo, something deep inside of my childhood memories resonated with an urge for me to remember them. Video games are supposed to give you emotions, sometimes sadness, sometimes joy, others anger and fear, brush, adrenaline. I have to tell you, Baldo is a nostalgia train. For the subject them gorgeous and beautiful gamers, the welcome back to role-playing games. Before we continue with the review, please consider taking some time to like the video, it really helps me a lot. Subscribe as well, while not, I'm pretty sure that you can find interesting stuff if you like RPGs, if you browse around in the channel. Alright, now that being said, graphics go first. You cannot expect a 25 box indie game to blow your mind on the graphical presentation, yet there is indeed some degree of charm in Baldo. Consoles wise, none of them, even the actual generation, run the game at 4K, nor give you more than 30 FPS. That on a technical side might already be a letdown for some people. When you look at the individual graphics, you'll notice that there's a really low quality detail on the textures, as well as models that definitely look low polygon, illumination sources are not the best looking thing in the world. There are major things that try to alleviate this. A depth of field option that surrounds you with a depth of field spear on Baldo, and somehow hides at some extent the poor quality of the stuff around you, and the art style of course, it helps. Baldo is not just a cartoonish game, it has a special charm of those animated films and cartoons we used to watch when we were young. Haiti, Candy Candy, that is indeed the vibe that the characters and places from this game irradiate. You can see these films in blossomed in every single corner you look in Baldo. Like I said, it is a nostalgia train. But not only on that does Baldo nails the graphical presentation. Saturation of colors. Bloom. Everything is incredibly well done, I have to say, it's cunning in here. When you're out in the open field, it might as well look normal, generic and functional. But once you get inside those dungeons, something feels right. You'll see yellow, dark moon blue, bleak green dancing around the contrast and colors draw the illumination for you. And somehow it feels nice to watch. While the illumination sources and lightning, it's not the best thing in the world. Those colors, those paintings, that's where you see how the developers are cunning and high the low quality of light sources provide and stuff like that by fixing stuff with art style. There are all kind of dungeons and you remember them because they have something special. Another letdown though, it is something I do not see why it wouldn't have been fixed, is the UI. Some kind of immersive background, a font for the letters, anything would have been nice. Instead you have this unimmersive black transparent background with the same font you would have in your phone. There are little details that could have helped a lot build that nostalgia to the sky even more. Not just the nostalgia, but the overall art direction of the game. And it really sucks, because you definitely see a lot of care put into the models of the items you find on the inventory and character screen. A proper UI would have given Baldo so much, really, so really much more personality than what it already has. Truly a shame. Now let's move on to sound. It is then beautiful, gorgeous, and again, nostalgic. The very first time I entered the open fields Baldo had for us, I remember myself in a dark room, an old TV, a bag of Cheetos, soda, and the sound of that damn beautiful Hyrule Field soundtrack. I would definitely be lying if I said that Baldo did not manage to make me connect with those memories I had stored in there. The items acquisition also helped with that, as well as the characters that speak to you. No, they do not actually speak to you with voice dialogue, but instead you have those peculiar noises characters used to make back in the day whenever you spoke to them. Now, music evolves. Music, much like ourselves, is a child of its time. As the world and media evolves, so does music. 
And when you listen to a specific soundtrack, whether on a movie or a game, you'll notice the difference of composition between something made in the 90s and today. Baldo feels and sounds much more similar to the first and the later. Although, somehow, it still maintains that modern signature of composition that's inherently part of how we perceive music today. The music is charming, it really fits the game, although it might be a little too loud and rather than offering artistic context to appreciate the rest of the game sounds, it often sounds way too loud. So it is my personal recommendation that you lower it a little bit, just a tiny little bit, so that you can appreciate the rest of the sounds. Those sounds, by the way, are surprisingly good as well. Maybe it is just them fitting the overall artistic design of the game, but they sound straightforward, not too produced. Surprisingly, the actual 3D sounds work perfectly well. If you play this thing with headphones, you will notice how some specific sounds feel on their place depending on where Baldo is standing. Now let's move on to the narrative. Much like music, narrative design evolves as the writers nourish themselves of other stuff out there. Nowadays, we have more complicated stories than those who follow Joseph Campbell's Hero's Road. While it is still there, writers try to add their special sauce to them and give more versatility to the stories they want to tell. Baldo stays the same as the old stories of our youth. Baldo is a young boy from a quiet village that lives its life in peace. One day, he finds the Guardian's Horn and learns about the owls and the ancient prophecy, and so he starts his adventure. One of the most noticeable aspects of this adventure is that every character you meet, they are really damn charming, you remember them, and you get to know them and grow fond of them. This is Baldo, the normal little boy that discovers he is more than just a normal little boy, and has to go out on an adventure. Baldo heads out to have his adventure, your adventure, our adventure. While we're at that, why don't we talk about an adventure in itself? This were more hits and misses you can find. At times you'll see how challenging Baldo can be and somehow I can see how many people will try to excuse it with it is an old school game. I have to say that in many a time, many of those old school games function better than Baldo. You are going to die a lot. But there is not a proper implementation of a risk and reward mechanic and since the developers know about this, they do not actually give a damn about the game over. Like if it doesn't have any kind of impact or represented a setback. When you're in a dungeon and you die, everything remains the same. Your progress, everything, and you're placed back in the exact place you died, and the enemies you killed, they remain dead as well. That is such a disappointment because there is definitely a lot of stuff in here, you can see how it functions correctly at some extent, and when you get to a boss fight, you see the patterns. You learn the patterns and manage to defeat it now that you know the moveset, which is damn amazing. But in many a time, hitboxes are not going to be your friend, nor the enemies for that matter. So while the combat does its job, and we all know that combat is not the most important thing in an adventure game, it desperately adds that artificial difficulty to somehow excuse the old school game argument. While you're in the field, there are many, many enemies that will kill you in one hit no matter what. That is artificial difficulty. Now when we talk about navigation in the dungeons and temples, that's a hit and miss as well. You get the formula of different rooms with specific puzzles and locked doors that require keys for you to proceed. While they work, navigation is not the best. Dungeons are mazes and you can get lost quite easily. Baldo doesn't offer you a minimap like the old school games used to give you to have that sense of exploration that you're an explorer and the adventurer that you are. Other than that, when you actually manage to find solutions to proceed by yourself, you feel that sentiment of accomplishment and feel rewarded, which is also true for the world exploration. Baldo does not hold your hand and tell you what to go and what to do. You have to infer that from the character's conversations and say, oh shit, I remember that, let's go there and see what we can find. That's where Baldo nails the thing. Alright, that being said, like always, I try to break the games as best as I can to show you the bare bones product and see what are you going to be paying for. After that, I add my bias and personal recommendations in case you're interested in that stuff. At times, Baldo feels like a low budget game trying to appeal to your wallet, making you reminisce of that stuff you had in your childhood. But I'll tell you what, something while I was playing this thing made me realize that the developers actually knew the spirit of that media. They grew up playing that stuff and wanted to give it back to us. It has its problems. It is not a perfect game. It doesn't do everything completely right, but the game has some kind of a spirit. 
combat might feel unfair, but when you get more stuff, you prepare yourself, you understand the world a little bit more, you can bypass that and enjoy how gorgeous and alluring the world of Baldo is. It might feel like a nostalgia cash grab and you know what it might actually definitely be, but if I am completely honest with you, I feel like a little kid again playing this thing. I do not know if it will be the same for you, but for me it definitely was. And I was longing so long for such a game like this. Immortals Phoenix Rising tried to give it to us, but it felt way too modernized of a game. The essence was there, the spirit not so much. Baldo, it has that spirit. It is a $25 game, and if you know what you are going to be paying for, then it's completely worth it. I do definitely recommend you to play Baldo, if you know what you're getting into. That being said, that was all from me guys, hope you enjoyed the review. If you liked the video, then do please like the video, subscribe as well. I'll see you damn gorgeous and beautiful gamers in the next one. Do remember that if no one has told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person, then you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. Stay safe, stay beautiful and gorgeous. I'll be seeing you guys in the next one.